Alright guys, so as promised, um, this next video will be of me um, uh, just uh, basically giving you the rundown. This video is for the, the beginner and it's going to be about node indexing and XMLs and what have you. So I'll just use my um, Cat Challenger for example and we'll open this up in and uh, Giants Editor. Um, so first thing you notice when you first open a mod you're gonna come to this view and when I first started I believe it was a John Deere 9630 it uh, what bothered me is I felt that the indoor cabin was really low like you're just a little midget that was running so when you first open up um, you'll see that I have cameras here and here and these are old cameras that I, I they're not indexed I'm using these cameras because my cab this um, this cabin is uh, for for um, the uh, cab suspension and uh, so you, what, what you want to do is you'll go down I already have a camera created but when you first open a mod come down here and go to create camera and I will index another camera then you come up to view camera and you go to the very bottom that would be your last camera and now you um, you are ready to do um, whatever you want and I have my navigation speed at 49 so on your key bat, your key your keypad on your keyboard you can do um, plus key and you see how that number is going up and what that does is it allows you to really uh, go really fast. I usually have it up high when I'm doing map, but I'm doing detailing work in GE on a model. I'll bump that down to like seven or something and see how that scroll speed just slowed way down. It allows you to get really in close on details. So, like here, you can get really in detail and look at the interior and underneath and stuff like that. And you can zoom in and get really close and look at everything you're looking at. So you can even, if you're doing interior, you can bump it down to one, and then um, you can hold down your middle mouse key and just kind of really position your keyboard where you want, so you can mess with any kind of things you you really want. You can make sure it's all like lined up. Um, so I'll just like increase that a little bit because this video is on node node order. So this is um, your nodes these things right here like node 1, node 2, node 3, these are all nodes so when someone says um, your node it is this is your index path 001 is this um, so I will go and show you how to uh, right click and open actually I'll close all these that I was working on Okay, so the complete novice. So wheel wheel one is zero 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 or zero 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 one zero two zero three, and that's just referencing this, 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 and this. So these are both left wheels, and if you look at the x coordinate of both left uh, left wheels, they're the same. Now if you have them any kind of like if they're different spacing you'll get some kind of driving issues um, this right wheel and this right wheel same same X so the spacing is symmetrical also the front and right we the the front right and front left they both have the same Y as do the back and they both have the same Z the back so you always want to make sure that your front two are the same you know same height same Z and your back are same height same Z and that your both sides are the same X that way you know that any kind of driving issues you have or not because your spacing is incorrect and you can see that these are just uh, index this is what they mean by the node index the zero zero is referencing this node it's referencing your right uh, your right front zero zero one is your uh, front left 002 is your back right, 003 is your back left. 
So hopefully that clarifies a few things. And um, another thing is, if these, because these wheels are, um, at the very top of the scenograph, all these other nodes, they all have their specific indexes, like 0, 21, 0, 21. So if we were to like move this up or down, or if we were to delete um, this, for example, because we don't need it, and this just became a 0, 21, now this is referencing something that does not exist you'll get a call stack error and when you go to buy it it will be like oh not enough room to buy a vehicle error and stuff like that so I highly recommend to just um, if you're gonna delete something this is how I do it if I no longer want these two cameras I'll create a transform group oh whoops I'll create a transform group so I have these two transform groups. I will select both of them from the top down. This is very important to select the top one first, then the second one. So you always want to go from the top down. Now if you were to select from the bottom up, I'll just show you an example. So I'll select this first, then this, then this. I'll do control C and then copy. See how it keeps the same, same um, order? Now watch this. If I were to select the track frame first, then the mainframe, then the cab, and I do control C, you see that it reversed the order. So it is imperative to select from the top down, otherwise if you select from the bottom up, or some arbitrary order, it goes in the order that you select. So um, make sure when you're making edits in GE or rearranging um, that you do it that way. Now going back to my camera. I no longer want these two cameras, so I'll just uh, uh, do Control X, not Control C, but Control X. I will copy, do Control V, post it, paste it in here, and I have this one and this one. So I'll select from the top down, do Control X, and then Control V. So you see, all of my nodes retain the same order. I added two blank transform groups because I want to delete these two. So I deleted them. They're no longer there. I have these that replaced. I have my same no order. If we look at this, this is 0, 021, 0, 021. Everything is good to go. So and it works the same way. If you want to replace wheels, you would just import your wheels. Um, then you would do the same thing. You would do Control X, paste it in here. They would appear at the bottom. Then, if you wanted to place four wheels, you'd select here and here, do your control X and uh, paste it again. And so your wheels would now move up here to your uh, in node order, and then you'd replace these existing wheels. And you just do the same thing. So, if that was too fast for you, just pause it, rewatch it again, because that's very important um, in order to maintain your node indexes so your node order doesn't get completely thrown off. Um, now cameras. Your camera is, um, your camera 2 and camera 1. You can have as many cameras as you want. Just make sure to increase your camera count and that your camera count reflects the amount of cameras you actually have. Um, your Raycast nodes are so it doesn't actually go through the model. Um, so I actually probably need a third Raycast node in here. That's for your outdoor camera, so you can't like scan in and go through the model. It's, it's kind of like a, a, a boundary. And then um, you just reference your nodes and always make sure you have uh, your actual camera and then your rotation node. Um, so this is the rotation node for that camera, and this is my outdoor camera. And um, um, we're using this camera right here. So you want to make sure that uh, I always do my outdoor clip distances at like 38. So if we come here, you can see that we are short on cameras because we deleted them. We go to the outdoor camera, and I can um, I can increase this to like 67. I can increase it to 28. I increase it to 38. Um, you can increase it to like 12 to bump it out a little bit. 
Um, then you could go to your indoor camera here. Uh, indoor camera. That's this one, and you can also increase your viewing distance and so on and so forth. Uh, but go back to uh, camera. Maybe, maybe for you guys, when you first make it, just be like, edit camera. That way you know that this is the camera that you always want to be selected on. You know, I already had one essentially, so we can like go to that one too. This is just another edit camera. And um, that, I believe that will help a lot of you guys when you're just beginning. Because everything else is, you know, it's all pretty much cookbook. You plug it in. Oh, now, I've seen so many crazy things, people talking about um, how masses are calculated in this game, FS-15. Now, FS-13 was totally different. Um, this uses the same approach that uh, MR used in FS-13. So, I have this set up at 24. Now, let's see what happens. We'll just go Google. We'll go to tractorhouse.com or uh, no. Um, what is it? Challenger 875. Um, we'll go to tractor data. That's what I want. And we'll go to All right, so we're looking at weight. Okay, so it's a little bit heavy on my part. I want to test, um, open up the PDF file because it's a little bit more accurate than, than um, and we'll scroll down here. We'll look at um, the data on This machine will hopefully it will tell us tires, ballast, weight, track width. Okay, so static weight with operator. We're looking at um, with a ballast. So I'm using this ballast figure, um, 25.4. So and ours is okay. So we want to increase this density. We'll probably do like 0.5. So this is, see now our figure, we just changed our density a little bit, and now our figure reflects the accurate figure. This is, it's not based on tons, it's not based on pounds. Some people must be thinking of, like, it's in a pound figure, but it's all in kg. Um, and so now our figure, our mass is also in 25 uh, kilogram. So that's how you do that, and then you just take your center, just you know, highlight that, copy it, copy and paste. Then you come down here, and you can be like, uh, you can copy and paste in there. But I believe, for whatever reason, I think it's Y coordinate is a little bit too high because this this geometry here weighs more, a lot more than this. Um, so you can see where um, the mass is. I have it at like one. Actually, we could probably put it at something. That. We'll just copy and paste it in there. So there we go. Um, so that's how you uh, calculate your mass. Um, you use uh, specific data. I uh, use uh, tractor data, um, and you kind of can like determine which one you want. I used to use this figure all the time when I did MR mods, and I would use my ballast figure for my weights. You can do it had the ballast function and you'd get up to that mass so I did the same thing with the 2720 um, that's how you know it's identical um, the mass is exactly accurate um, it's just when you go into XML it will be like uh, power consumer or like force and stuff like that um, actually I wonder if I have something open um, I'll just open up this disk ripper so I can show you guys what I'm what I'm talking about so when you're setting up, it has nothing to do with mass. People that say it just are 
totally like ignorant like they have no idea what they're talking about but this is the value that determines how hard something pulls max force of 80 that's 80 whatever units of force per the working width so if you increase the working area um, that is the force applied per cutting the per working area I believe so this is if it's pulling really hard just reduce that the the mass is correct but if you feel like it's pulling a little bit hard or if you want it to pull harder you just increase this or decrease it and that's all you have to do um, this is how it and then if it's running a, a needed to p pull a PTO um, for example like um, uh, my DB120 uh, planner here um, you can see that I have a speed limit value this is as fast as it will be able to pull it so I limit the speed it can pull so I might have enough power to overcome the pull force and I might have enough power to overcome the PTO um, but I only limit the speed to 18 kilometers and this speed is 20 kilometers if you can overcome this force so you have a max force in a, um, so that really limits the size of tractor that can pull it and then you have a speed value in case you put like something that has too much horsepower it will limit the speed so you can't pull it all the way across the map um, and another thing is um, people kinda the, feel like the turning radius might be too small so um, this is when you go on the XML this is the um, these are the lines that you're really looking for um, this is the main hitch this one's a little bit different so I'll reference this one so this is what you're looking for this is uh, um, basically your left and right you, if it's too if it's not allowing you to turn sharp enough just bump these up 10 degrees you know and this will allow you to turn sharper but at the same case it might like your wheel might go through the the bar so that's how you increase your turning your ability to increase your turning radius um, what else oh another thing is uh, work multipliers your work multiplier this will increase the uh, the time it, it will decrease the time it takes to get dirty if it's working in the field otherwise it will take um, um, this dirt duration I think this might be minutes I'm not even sure anymore um, but to get fully dirty um, and um, basically that's really all I have to talk about today so what we did is we discussed node orders how to basically change wheels and keep the existing node order again the things you want to keep in mind are always if you're trying to replace from this on down to go top down and um, do your control X and then control V and hopefully that will solve a lot of your issues you're having and always make sure after you're done replacing something that your indexes are all maintained the, the same uh, same node order so that's all I have for you guys so thanks for watching